Before becoming a professional controversial guy, Andrew Tate was born, like the rest of us. He had a childhood, but we don't know much about that. The son of an American father and British mother, Tate's parents split when he was four. He was raised in the UK by his mother. Tate first came into the public eye as a professional kickboxer. He's retired now, but he won 17 of his 19 professional fights and won two championship belts. That's nice, but there's no money in kickboxing. The sport has three fans, and one of them is Andrew Tate. So Tate turned to that career path, beloved by fame-hungry weirdos, failed singers, talentless actresses, and retired athletes. He was a contestant on the 2016 season of Big Brother UK, but only lasted six days. He was kicked off the show following the leak of a video that showed him belting a woman. It turned out to be consensual kinky play, but the damage was already done. Did I say it? Look at the camera. After his short stint on Big Brother, Andrew Tate moved to Romania, stating that the country's less stringent sexual assault laws were 40% of the reason he moved there. Naturally, he qualified that statement by saying he's no Tate mostly dropped out of the public eye while in Romania, but it wasn't for lack of trying. He started his YouTube channel, The Tate Speech, around this time. With 3,000 subscribers in 2018, the channel wasn't very big. But what Tate lacked in subscriber counts, he made up for with sheer bluster. The personality was a fully formed Andrew Tate, a rich jerk who mostly bragged about how rich he was and ranted about everything else under the sun when he wasn't simping for African warlords. Alongside the channel, Tate sold overpriced courses with a focus on exercise regimens, mastering chess, how to get girls, and how to get rich. But we're jumping the gun here. How did Tate get rich in the first place? That's one hell of a murky subject. Tate himself claims he grew up poor, and his brother Tristan backs it up. A rumor on the internet claims he inherited a hotel in Thailand from his father, Emery Tate Jr., a retired U.S. Air Force sergeant and chess master. I couldn't verify this rumor. I tracked it down to the Romanian newspaper Gandal, which appears to be a gossip rat. Google Translate didn't do a good job of translating the page either. But from verifiable sources, Tate made his money in three ways. A little bit of it came from kickboxing, but the rest has come from highly questionable ventures. Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan run a webcamming studio in Romania that charges lonely men as much as $4 per minute plus tips. They also have interests in casinos and strip clubs. Then Tate made even more money by posing as a rich guy selling secrets to wealth creation to impressionable young men. Tate is a misogynistic Ty Lopez with all this pseudo-intellectualism swapped out for pure unadulterated machismo. But before we dive into the Tate money machine, let's examine how he got famous in the first place. The Tate Style In current attention economy, eyeballs are the only thing that matter. If you have attention, the money will soon follow. It's why the Kardashians are so rich and famous. Or is it the other way around? It doesn't really matter. Attention brings fame and fame brings money. But how do you stand out in a sea of billions, all trying to be famous? Controversy, of course. You aren't going to attract attention by being a well-spoken, well-adjusted person on the internet. You have to be a whack job. You have to say and do a bunch of things normal people wouldn't. It's the only way to get attention. And that's precisely what Andrew Tate did. In January 2022, Andrew Tate was practically a nobody. By August, he was everywhere. You couldn't scroll TikTok without running into one of his videos. And he was always saying something insane. If you are competent in every single sphere, you're going to be viewed as mafia. Tate wasn't much for consistency. He would talk of God and Jesus and lament the decline of traditional family values in one sentence and then brag about his playboy lifestyle in the next one. He would offer to teach his legions of fans how to be rich like him and then tell them they were low IQ idiots who lacked the charisma to make it in life. He would offer to teach men how to get and keep women in one line and then say the most horrible things about women in the very next one. Tate's strength wasn't consistency, it was controversy. He simply said the things that would get the most people to listen to him and react to the content. Who cares if his statements made sense? Videos with Andrew Tate's hashtag were viewed over 13 billion times on TikTok. He became the most searched person on Google for a month, edging out the likes of Kim Kardashian and Donald Trump. It was a level of virality that hasn't been matched by anyone else in recent memory other than Trump himself when he ran for president. What's even more interesting is that 99% of the videos you've seen weren't even from Tate himself. They were just interview clips distributed by his thousands of fans. That's why his videos are still littering YouTube and TikTok despite Tate himself being banned. The Tate Innovation Many influencers on the internet work hard to drive traffic to their pages. They want you to follow, like, subscribe, 
buy, etc. So they try to get their content in front of as many eyeballs as possible. This is hard if you don't already have a huge following. The alternative is to buy ads and pay to boost your post so it reaches as many people as possible. This can grow expensive pretty fast. To get a billion views, you'll have to spend a couple of million. Yet Andrew Tate got 13 billion views on TikTok without spending a cent. The secret, of course, is outsourcing. Not to some click farm in some third world country, but to impressionable young men who'd already bought into the Tate cult. Tate wasn't just pushing misogyny. That's the stuff that got him noticed, but the underlying product was a dream. A dream we've all had, a dream of wealth, of financial success, of Lamborghinis in the driveway and models under the sheets. Andrew Tate was sharing the secrets to achieve this sweet, sweet dream for a measly $49 a month subscription to his course, Hustlers University. You see, Hustlers University wasn't as stuck up as those elitists at Harvard, with their 5% acceptance rates. Hustlers University accepted everyone willing to learn. And here is the sweetest part. If you refer another student to Hustlers University, you get a 48% cut of his tuition. I mean, subscription fee. And so, armed with their subscription, affiliate links, and the most provocative Andrew Tate videos they could find, Hustlers University freshmen went recruiting new students for their school. That's why you saw Tate everywhere. There were thousands of accounts all reposting the same content of Tate, spewing some outrageous thing or another. This was a case of hurling as much stuff at the wall to see what sticks. Tate encouraged them to find the clips that would elicit the most controversy. The upside was Andrew Tate's fans did all that work for free, and he got the benefit of fame. And more enrollments into Hustlers University, a university with a reported student body of 80,000 to 100,000 and a faculty of five. Getting his victims, sorry, his students to do his recruiting for him wasn't an Andrew Tate invention. Pyramid schemes were doing it long before he was born. But he was the first man to deploy that method so successfully on social media. He went viral just like that as wannabe Jika Chads reposted his most insane utterances everywhere. No one has manipulated social media recommendation algorithms as much as Andrew Tate. While the sheer volume of content didn't hurt, being explicitly controversial was the other half of Tate's strategy to achieve the fame he has thirsted for all his life. How social media recommendation algorithms work and how to manipulate them as Tate did. While social media sites have banned Tate for spreading hate, and violating their terms of service, he is a monster of their own creation. The most valuable thing the likes of TikTok and Instagram have isn't the money in their bank accounts or their source code. It is you, their user. Their entire business model revolves around keeping you on the platform as long as possible. The longer you scroll through their apps, the more ads they can show you, and consequently the more money they can make. Have you ever opened TikTok or Instagram to check a notification and then found yourself still scrolling two hours later? That's not a bug. It's a feature. These apps are purposefully designed to be addictive. They sink their claws into you the minute you view the first post on your feed and never let go until your phone battery dies. But how do they do this? By showing you interesting stuff, of course. Every social media platform keeps a tight lid on its recommendation algorithm. They're not scared someone will copy it. Many are so well established no upstart could hope to compete. They are more scared of letting you see how they manipulate you. No two social media feeds are the same. The algorithm gathers as much information as it can and then weaponizes that information to show you content that will hook you. Oh, here a 25-year-old male who hates his job, lives in Crab City, wants to travel, likes burgers and beer, and gets depressed every time the Knicks lose. How unique of you! Here's stuff other men exactly like you liked. Recommendation algorithms refine their recommendations the more you use an app. If you like and comment on a post, guess what? You're going to see more of the same. What? You saw Andrew Tate saying something horrible and registered your disagreement in the comments. That still counts as engagement. Comments, likes, shares, and reactions all count as engagement. Posts with higher rates of engagement get shown to more people. That's how social media works. But YouTube man, you may ask, I don't like this stuff. And instead of answering, I will ask you this, why do you keep commenting? Why aren't you blocking? You like getting angry, don't you, you naughty little minx? It's not your fault. It's not just funny things that make us happy. Anger can paradoxically make us happy. This is the reason why the top grossing movies in the world aren't comedies. They're films like Avatar, Avengers, Lord of the Rings, and Harry Potter. While these movies are entertaining, that entertainment comes from the struggle the characters go through. The catharsis after they eventually triumph. It's the same reason we like sports. Watching your hometown team getting walloped week after week may not be fun, but isn't all the pain worth it when they finally win? The Cleveland Browns, the Falcons, the Vikings, and nine other NFL teams 
I don't have the time to list have never won the Super Bowl, but try telling their fans that maybe they should consider supporting the Patriots. Just try it. I'm no psychologist, but the struggle is at the heart of the human experience. We like to suffer, just a little, not too much. And after suffering comes the triumph, the catharsis, and the orgasm of winning. You study hard for a good grade, work hard for a paycheck, and read through an insufferable tweet just for the pleasure of leaving that witty and fitting clap back. Don't you feel good when you do that? Don't you feel even better when those likes start coming in? That's the part of your brain social media apps have hacked, your reward center. The amount of dopamine that is received when you find a $20 bill in an old pair of jeans is too different from the dopamine hit you get when you garner 200 likes on TikTok. That pure joy is what social media apps target. It's like finding money in your old clothes every day. It's addictive as f This facet of human psychology is what makes Andrew Tate and others, who make a career out of making bonkers statements on social media so successful. You can't hate a picture of a baby. It's just not socially acceptable. If it's your sister's baby, you give the obligatory like and a generic comment. If it's a stranger's baby, you just scroll past without doing anything. It's not that you hate the baby, you simply don't care. Then in comes a guy like Andrew Tate. He says such insane stuff that you're forced to pick a side. You can scroll past and never care, but it's hard. You either agree with him or you don't. There's no middle ground. All your friends are also picking sides. This is an incredibly clever tactic. It ignites that us-versus-them, tribalistic mentality that lies dormant in all humans until it's activated when some filthy Europor dares to claim that his tiny microstate, with zero nuclear warheads, and a lower population than Lincoln, Nebraska, is better than America. And that tribalism is exactly what Andrew Tate tapped into. He isn't the first, second, or even 100th person to do it. Politicians and rabid fandoms on Tumblr do it all the time. Andrew Tate just dialed it up 11. Love him or hate him, there were a lot of people who agreed with the guy. He couldn't have attracted his army of reposters otherwise. Tate didn't say anything you haven't heard before. He just had the audacity to say it out loud online and put his face to it. And he did so repeatedly. While his open misogyny is what made him go viral, Tate's underlying message was an old one. He wanted to inspire young men to be like him. A lot of young men want to be rich, drive fast cars, say what they want, and bet attractive women. Who could have thunk it? And these young men joined Andrew Tate's army. They endlessly reposted his content everywhere in defiance of naysayers. And so the battle lines were drawn between taters and anti-taters. Taters were promised financial freedom and the playboy lifestyle by their massah. Anti-taters believed they were slaying the dragon of misogyny and making the world a better place. Members of each side made their opinions known and their allies signaled their agreement with likes and more comments. Everybody on each side got those sweet, sweet likes and the accompanying dopamine hits, the fuel of social media addiction. As posts received more engagement, they were shown. Did you make a reaction video dunking on Andrew Tate? Guess what? He doesn't care. The dude just wanted to get his face in front of as many eyeballs as possible. And you did that for him. For free. There were only two real winners here, Andrew Tate and TikTok. Tate got more famous, increasing his credibility and widening the pool of people he could scam and make more money. TikTok had users spending more time on their app, allowing them to show more ads and make more money. And the soldiers in this war of ideas, they got nothing of course. What were they supposed to receive? Money? You can't be serious. Dopamine is enough. That's how controversy generates notoriety. It's impossible to get everyone to love you. It's also stupid to get everyone to hate you. The sweet spot is to get half the people to love you and the other half to hate you with a passion. That's how you employ controversy for success in the social media age. But the 50-50 ratio isn't necessary. You can have more haters than fans as long as you have fans. This is the attention age. You fail when they ignore you, and no man appears to have understood this better than Andrew Tate. Andrew and Tristan Tate's webcam business. While I briefly touched on the morally questionable Tate businesses earlier in this video, I didn't get into detail. If not for a braggy interview Andrew Tate's brother conducted with the British outlet, The Mirror, back in March, we wouldn't know anything about the Tate webcamming business. But now we do. How did it work? Well, you see, men are lonely. Women too, I guess, but mostly men. And what's the one thing lonely men crave the most? Women, of course. How did the Tates come into this? They started a webcamming business. They hired attractive women, nines and tens, the kind of women you would never dream of approaching on the street. Then they put them in bikinis because why not? While excited teenagers think webcamming is all about watching women pleasure themselves and do kinky stuff on camera. For the men who use these services the most, it's more about the relationship. 
The cam girl isn't some random thought to them. She's a girlfriend who lives in Romania, but love conquers all wallets. So these men would come online to talk to these virtual girlfriends of theirs, paying as much as $4 a minute for the privilege. $4 a minute is $240 an hour if you're slow at math. These women were gentle and attentive. They asked after your dog and your mom and that weird mole on your back you told them about last week. They love you as much as you love them. They want to come visit you. Isn't that nice? People say that's almost as good as having a real girlfriend. The catch, of course, is that these women did nothing of the sort. They just sat there, smiling and looking pretty with their hands positioned on a keyboard, while the Tate brothers played typing sounds on a loop. The real work was done by poor English majors. The Tates didn't want their Romanian models ruining the romance with their subpar language skills. So while some poor sob in Linden, Utah thought, he was chatting with a hot 21-year-old in Bucharest, he was actually getting his heartstrings pulled by a bearded part-time barista with a 20-inch beer belly and two overdue child support payments. The scam didn't stop there. Once you were in good with your girlfriend, you would start hearing some sob story or another. Babe, I need a boob job. Babe, my mom is sick. Babe, I'm broke. These would be concocted by the English major, of course. But what do you care? A hot girl just called you babe. That's at least second base. And so the poor snobs sent money to these desperate honeys for some emergency or another. One British man spent the entirety of a £20,000 inheritance from his grandma on a single cam girl. The Tate brothers took a 40% commission from all this. Tristan Tate himself called their business a massive scam. Cocratate.com Cocratate.com was an early iteration of Hustlers University. This was where Andrew Tate sold access to himself and scam-adjacent products like overpriced nutritional supplements, exercise classes, and label swap clothing. He also offered a course on how to get and keep girls for $250. Of course, Andrew Tate gets girls. He's a six-foot-one athlete with boatloads of cash and self-confidence oozing out his pores. Some girls will go for that no matter how repulsive he is as a person. That's probably all he needs. He doesn't need to work at it. If you, on the other hand, are not the man of women's wet dreams, what could he possibly teach you that would be helpful? Hustlers University Hustlers University is Andrew Tate's latest and possibly most lucrative money-making venture. It is the business his fans on TikTok pushed. The tagline was simple. Make $10,000 plus a month by taking a few short courses at Hustlers University. It's only 50 bucks a month. Hustlers University wasn't technically a scam. They didn't take your money and run. They'd actually delivered the lessons they promised. The expected income after graduation was nowhere close to what they claimed. But which college hasn't made overblown claims about future salary prospects? The difference between Hustlers University and a real college is that a real college has actual classes and gives you a degree at the end of your studies that people actually recognized out in the real world. Hustlers University just compiles a bunch of information you can find for free on the internet and offers it to you at $49 a month for life or however long you choose to stay enrolled. So what did Hustlers University teach? How to run a webcamming site? No, of course not. They taught the standard fare of web scammers, drop shipping, real estate investing, stock and cryptocurrency investing, and the like. But Andrew Tate knows nothing about any of these things. Wall Street hires quantitative finance PhD holders, pays them millions of dollars a year, and they still can't get the stock market right. Is it possible that some playboy on TikTok knows the secret? and he's only sharing it for $50? Of course not. Andrew Tate knows nothing about the things he purports to teach. He made his money scamming lonely guys on cam sites. Then he made more scamming desperate guys on TikTok. But he can't teach you that. You'll be a threat to him and cannibalize his business. Hustlers University doesn't sell practical skills. It sells a dream. The dream of wealth. You don't pay the 50 bucks to learn anything useful. You're paying and hoping that one day you'll be as rich as Tate. With over 100,000 people signing up to Hustlers University, Andrew Tate was clearing $5 million a month. That's nearly twice as much as an average American can expect to make throughout his entire lifetime. Tate is of course betting that you will be too stupid to notice, that it is your subscription fees financing his lavish lifestyle instead of the so-called skills he purports to teach you. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for Hustlers University today. Someone's gotta pay for the poor man's Bugatti. Oh, wait. Stripe suspended his payment processing.